you're just going to sink from the standing poses you just did, keeping the knees inside the toes like this, come down and relax down to the ground using your arms for balance. A lot of people in the West, because they're not used to sitting like this unless they happen to be catchers in baseball or softball, they're not used to this position at all and they may find that they have to be up on the balls of the feet, which is very unstable and wobbly. The Achilles tendons may not be long enough, especially women who wear heels a lot uh, will find that their uh, Achilles tendons have shortened up. So this may take some time getting into this pose and being comfortable with it. You want to make sure that the knees track the middle toes. Same principles as when you're standing. If the knee comes in this way, you're going to be pulling on these ligaments on the inside of the knee. It gets very painful if you do it a lot. That's the problem that catchers have if they don't use proper structure. That's why catchers develop knee problems. If they sit like this, there's no problem at all. There are people in Southeast Asia who sit like this, waiting for the bus, chopping vegetables, etc., their entire lives and never develop knee problems. Uh, they're walking well into their 80s. So it's not actually a problem of position, but rather of mechanics within the position. If the knees dip in, you're going to get that pulling in the ligaments, and you're going to start to get wear and tear in the knees. If the knees stay lined up with the toes, wherever that happens to be, whether it's out to the side this way or to the front, then you're going to be just fine. This position is very important, especially for women uh, in Tantra. Uh, it's important for women and men's digestive health and reproductive health in general. It's not done very much in the West, so we have a lot of Westerners who are very constipated. Uh, in the East, of course, um, especially in areas where toilets are still ceramic holes in the ground or actual holes in the ground, or anybody who's done this uh, camping, of course, you'll notice that it's actually much easier to go to the bathroom in this position than sitting up like this. Try it right now and notice your awareness of the pelvic floor. Just sit in a sitting position, either on a chair or fake it like I am, and then sink back down into this position. It's important when you're down in this position, you again let the thighs ease out of the hips. If you don't, you're going to hold yourself up like this using mus muscle in the hip flexor. If you relax, the hip flexor will stretch and you'll just sink. And the pelvic floor will be stretched wide open. It's much easier to give birth. It's much easier to go to the bathroom. Either one. Very important for your body. And if you're in this position and you move around in this position, again, paying attention to make sure that your knees are okay. If you do any of these movements, notice that my foot is tracking my knee as I move from side to side. These are done a lot by martial artists who do groundwork, everything from jujitsu to penjak silat. Moving around this way and making sure that the knees are not hurting opens up all of the muscles in here. It also massages both the lower digestive tract and the reproductive organs. So all of the little um, suspensory ligaments that hold the ovaries in place, that hold the vas deferens or the testicles in place, are all massaged, uh, relaxed, and toned. This position is uh, very important as well for the female superior positions that are used in traditional Tantra, especially within the Shakti cults. So, Moving from this to this, you're going to stay in the same position. The pelvic floor is still relaxed open. Your butt is relaxed down away from your femurs, but you're going to gently insert the arms here and stretch your head upwards, lengthening your spine upwards, tugging upwards from the sternum as well as if there's a string here pulling up towards the ceiling and lengthen. Notice that I'm not lifting my butt off the floor. My butt stays relaxed down, my tailbone stretches towards the ground, and my head stretches up like this. Breathe and remain aware of both the pelvic floor and of the crown of the head, Sahasrara Chakra. Begin to do any of your inner smile techniques that you've already learned and become profoundly aware of the breathing of the pelvic floor, the opening and closing. Every time you inhale, it'll be expanding like a water balloon that's being filled from the faucet. Every time you exhale, it's like it's the water balloon collapsing back in on itself and the water is flowing back out of the top of the balloon. Stretch that head upwards and breathe as if you're breathing in through the head and in through the feet all the way up through the legs so that everything is traveling this way towards the pelvic floor and this way towards the pelvic floor. As you exhale, just release it back out through the top of the head and out through the legs as if the body were hollow. Then relax completely to come out. Go from here to here. Notice my toes are again tracking my knee. My toes are not outside. They're actually with the knee. Relax to the floor this way. You can sit momentarily in Vajrasana like this. Relax the spine. 
Again, grab the thighs, tug them gently out this way, release the hip flexors, wiggle a little bit. Be aware of the pelvis suspended in space between the heels. Feel the pelvic floor. Bring your jaw just gently in, stretch the crown up, and relax the spine. Wiggle it a little if you have to. Now from this position, you can do any of these, or you can move into any of the other forward bends. It's safest and best for your joints if you just wiggle a little bit to loosen them up, and then swing the legs around here. 